Hello, this is Coach Wilson, and this is Unit 1, Day 7. Today's journal, I need you to talk about um, how Europe, the 13 colonies, and Africa were all economically int intertwined. We talked about that the last two days of notes that we have studied, uh, talking about the triangular trade, the transatlantic slave trade, and the Columbian Exchange. Just try to make sure you find a few of those things and write at least four to five complete sentences. Now today we're going to be talking about the 13 British colonies and we're going to spend about two days talking about an overview of what's going on um, economically and how they're surviving and then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to move into talking about the history of America building up to uh, the French and Indian War which will start in Unit 2. Now our essential question for the day is what were the major defining characteristics of these three colonial regions? Why did the colonies adopt these specific characteristics and which colonies were in each region? Now we got to go back to almost to the beginning of why do people come to the New World? And one of the big reasons was gold. Uh, this was in order to increase their wealth, gaining resources, land, and if you think back to mercantilism, it makes sense why people were coming here. There was also uh, people coming for religious reasons and coming for God, which is to escape religious persecution or to set up a colony that is geared around their beliefs. And then there's glory, trying to be a famous explorer who you know, paved the way for future generations to explore and to have wealth, etc. The important thing here is there's three G's, gold, God, and glory, and you definitely need to know that because all three of these have to do with starting a new life and coming to the new world for that reason. Now, we've talked about who came. First of all, we have the Spanish, the English, the French, the Dutch, and the Germans. All of these groups are setting up all along the eastern coast, except for the French who are going to take much of the Midwest and much of uh, Canada. The Spanish are going to be very involved in the Caribbean, but also they're going to take Florida. Then the rest is pretty much going to be what we know as the 13 colonies. Now, a couple things to start here. Um, I do have a couple definitions here that I want you to go through. Uh, the first being colonies. Okay, Colonies were a group of people who were leaving their native country to form a settlement subject to or connected with the parent nation. So in this case, we've talked a lot about England. England is the parent nation. All right, and you need to understand how a colony works and how it sets up because that explains everything for the next two units. There's three types of colonies that you could be a part of. The first was a charter or proprietary co colony. And it's owned by a specific individual or group of people who have formed a charter and they've been given the land by the monarch in Britain in order to set up this company in the new world. The other uh, potential opportunity was a joint stock company. And it was owned by investors. Okay, so these investors, um, they own the company and they're going to use the land in the new world to make money. A charter colony could have just been a colony that is set up and living and surviving in the new world. A joint stock company is using the land to make money. All right, now we have our last type of colony and this is going to be what eventually all 13 colonies that are uh, eventually controlled by England, obviously we talked about a lot of groups coming over, but once England has control of all of the colonies, and that'll be the first 13, all right, so we're not talking about Canada, we're not talking about the Midwest, we're talking about the 13 colonies, and we'll get more into that in the next two days. They're going to turn into royal colonies, and they are owned and ruled by the king through a royal governor. I think we've already made mention of that before. So here are the 13 colonies, all right, and you need to understand where these are. If you want to write them down in your notes, I highly suggest it. However, I will leave it up to you as long as you can differentiate where they belong in the spectrum of the colonies. Now, the big thing about understanding these places is once you hear the next few things in your notes, you're going to understand about what was going on in these places, why they were important, what, what they're doing to survive. So let's start off with New England. All right, and I'm going to go back to this so you can see it. New England, we have Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts. All right, so in those states, we're going to have trade, shipping, small farms, very, very religious, some town meetings, so that shows some form of government uh, starting to form, and big cities. All right, and the big cities are going to come later, but in terms of colonial life, they definitely had the biggest of cities. Now, trade and shipbuilding and shipping are going to be some of the main focuses for these areas, and it makes sense because they're along the coast in, some, in most cases. However, it's also important for you to note that that's going to also be very popular in the middle colonies as well, which we'll talk about later. All right, and we'll talk more about this tomorrow, which is what I mean by later. But today, and just to kind of give you a brief overview, the middle colonies is the most diverse region 
in the world during this time, or at least, or not the world, in the new world, I should say. And they had livestock, hunting, small farms, but they also had some shipbuilding. They also had some trade, but not as much as what you see in the New England colonies to start. Now, eventually, New York, which is a part of the middle colonies at this time, will eventually, they will develop a great amount of trade, and it will be the center of trade for the entire New World. But for this time, right now, they have a very diverse economy and a very diverse population. You're, you know, people are immigrating here and they're coming in into, into all of these coastal colonies. And they're also going to have a lot of religious diversity. And we'll talk more about that as we get into day 8 and day 9 and day 10 about some of the diversity religiously among these colonies. And then finally, you're going to have the southern colonies. And the southern colonies are going to be very much the same way for the next 150 years. So you're going to have plantations, a lot of cash crops such as tobacco and indigo, sugar cane, those types of things. Very few cities. It's very spread out, and you're not going to see cities form for a good period of time in North Carolina, Virginia, South Carolina, and Georgia. As far as Maryland, for that matter. And it's hard to think of Maryland as a uh, southern colony, but it kind of gets thrown in there. The other thing that you're going to see a lot in the South is slavery. Now, it's important to note that the middle colonies are going to have some slaves, as well as all the way from Georgia to Maryland, uh, there in Pennsylvania and places, there are slaves, but not to the extent that we will see in the mid to late 18, or the early to mid 1800s. When we get to that period in time, it's very, very focused in the South with slavery because most of the North has either freed their slaves or abolished slavery completely. So that is all I have for you today. Very, very short lecture. Just want to make sure I got through that. Um, quickly let you guys get down your notes and move on. Um, there's going to be a ton of information that we'll be trying to cover over the next three days, but you need to start understanding some of these basic principles and some of the differences between each of the colonies. So our first question, what were the reasons settlers would come to the new world? That should be easy. What are the differences between proprietary joint stock and royal colonies? That's why I had you guys define those. And then which region seems most attractive to new settlers? All right, and you kind of just, you, there is no you know, just perfect answer for the last one, but you do the best you can to kind of make your argument of why you think that colony would be the best. Vocabulary, here are your four words. And once again, if you're having any issues, please let me know. If not, I will talk to you soon.